From the WMTV studios, your news authority. NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Well, it's a very sad thing. We're going to pay our respects and to see the police who have done really a fantastic job in a very short time. Now at 11, President Trump visits Las Vegas for the first time since Sunday night's deadly shooting as we learn more about the shooter's girlfriend and his hotel room arsenal. Plus, at this hour, Foxconn is expected to make a long-awaited announcement on the location chosen for its new Wisconsin plant. Our big story today, President Trump is on his way to Las Vegas this morning, and we're getting a much closer look inside the investigation into the killing spree that went on there Sunday night. New details have emerged about the suspect, and dramatic images have been released from a sampling of police body cameras captured as the shots rang out. Jay Gray has the latest. The president and first lady leave Washington this morning, traveling to Las Vegas for the first time since the attack. Well, it's a very sad thing. We're going to pay our respects and to see the police who have done really a fantastic job in a very short time. And yeah, they're learning a lot more. Hey, you guys, get down! This video from police body cameras shows the frantic search to find the gunman and the rush to move people out of the firestorm raining down from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino. The first images from inside Stephen Paddock's hotel room are chilling. Just inside the blown-out door, a high-powered sniper rifle, one of 23 weapons scattered throughout the suite. Photos obtained by the Daily Mail show chairs filled with guns, spent ammo, and assault rifles scattered on the floor alongside Paddock's body. Officers say he turned one of the weapons on himself as they rushed in. Investigators have also uncovered multiple video cameras. There were two cameras located in the hallway so that the suspect could watch as law enforcement or security approached his room. And there was another camera placed inside the hotel room door peephole so that he could see down the hallway. Agents also met Paddock's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, at the Los Angeles airport. She returned to the U.S. from the Philippines overnight. The investigation with her is ongoing. Currently, she's a person of interest. Interest and information that's growing as investigators continue to search for a motive in the killing spree. Jay Gray, NBC News, Las Vegas. We will continue to follow this story as new details emerge. Stick with NBC15.com and NBC News throughout the day for the latest. And tonight at 5.30, Nightly News will have continuing coverage of the shooting as Lester Holt brings you updates from Las Vegas. Happening now, the site of the tech giant Foxconn's Wisconsin manufacturing plant is being announced at this hour. According to the Associated Press, Foxconn is expected to announce it will locate its new plant in Mount Pleasant, which is in Racine County. It's planned to be a $10 billion, 20 million square foot facility that could one day employ up to 13,000 people. We're told Foxconn will later go on a state tour visiting Madison and Marquette, hoping to recruit future workers. Thank you, Amy. In our continuing coverage, Verona High School's dress code is in question after a student tweeted a photo stating her senior picture was flagged by the school as inappropriate. Here's the photo submitted by Eleanor Fitzwilliams as her senior school picture. She was told her bralette was showing and therefore breaking the school's dress code. She did agree to change the photo, but not before taking her frustrations to Twitter. She posted her photo alongside the shirtless boys swim team. That tweet has now been shared more than 200,000 times. As a woman, I feel there needs to be change. There needs to be conversation. There needs to be um, people speaking out about it, you know, because if it is due to historical uh, events or, or anything like that, it shouldn't just be accepted that that's how it is. The Verona School District tells NBC 15 they don't have a comment at this time, but Eleanor says she plans to meet with them to talk about how they can change and possibly adapt their policy to fit more modern fashion trends. In our Crime Tracker 15 report, Edgerton police say a drug deal turned into an armed robbery last night. Authorities say three men were meeting a woman for a drug deal just after 11. They say the woman parked her car on the area of Sterling Drive. Police say when the men approached the car, four unknown black men confronted them. The three victims told authorities they saw the men carrying guns and complied with their demands. Officials say those men got into the car with the woman and drove north on Sterling Drive. If you have any information, please contact the Edgerton Police Department or Janesville Area Crime Stoppers. 
Oregon police are investigating seven separate reports of mailboxes being damaged on Sunday. Police say those mailbox, ma mailboxes were on Ash Street, Lynn Trail, Alpine Parkway, Cherrywood, and South Burr Oak Avenue. Those are listed on your screen. Authorities are trying to identify the owner of the SUV in the picture on your screen. They say it was seen in the area. The driver is considered a person of interest. The SUV is believed to be an early to mid-2000s Chevy GMC or Suburban, possibly red or maroon in color. Please contact the Oregon Police Department. That number is on your screen if you have any information. Happening today, one of two Madison men charged with intentional homicide is inspected in court for a preliminary hearing today. Demetrius Reeves was arrested in connection to the fatal shooting of Kendrith Young at the 7-Eleven on the West Beltline in August, along with Curtis Langlois. The criminal complaint says the men were seen at the same bar as Young prior to the shooting. It also says the suspect drove to the 7-Eleven, put on masks, and shot Kendrith Young eight times. Another man was with Young that night. He was shot twice and survived. We'll still ahead on NBC 15 News at 11. Broadway once again comes to the Overture Center this week. Amy Carlson will sit down with the folks from The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. In your money, you want to stick to a budget when you shop, but somehow always manage to spend more than you meant to. If that sounds familiar, it sure does to me. You're not alone. Those on the selling side use simple tricks to get you to part with your money. Money expert Stacy Johnson explains. For money Target is now testing its new curbside service at 50 locations throughout Minnesota. Back in July, it was testing this service with Target employees at just a handful of stores. The pilot program is called Drive Up. Shoppers complete their order through Target's app or website and then head to the store and pick up their orders at designated parking spots. This. So brown, and we really need to have it. Absolutely, and I am looking forward to those peak leaves at the mm -hmm. end of the month. My favorite part of fall. So. Oh, I think for everyone. Good, absolutely. Well, it's pandemonium over at the Denver Zoo as they welcome two male red pandas born last week. And the brothers won't be visible to the public for another few weeks, but the zoo's animal care staff shared video of one of their regular exams to check the weight, temperature, and overall wellness of the young cubs. They still receive, they're still receiving some supplemental feeding, but the staff says the cubs and their mother are thriving, even noting the brothers have been pretty feisty and wrestling each other. They're so sweet. They're so tiny. And just a reminder, too, that not all pandas are black and white. Some can I be different know. colors. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, still to come on NBC 15 News at 11, a new study reveals how working the night shift could be harmful to your health. In your health, working at night may wreak havoc on your waistline. A new study found night shift work is linked to a 29% increased risk of becoming obese or overweight. Permanent night workers had a higher risk of weight gain than those who rotated shifts. Experts say modifying work schedules from time to time could help reduce these risks. And some good news and some bad news about how bullying affects children. A British researchers followed over 11,000 children from middle school into early high school. Those who were bullied had a higher risk of mental health issues like anxiety, depression, and paranoid thoughts. But over time, most of those symptoms faded or disappeared completely. Experts say bullying is definitely harmful, but most children are resilient. And coming up next, we will have a final look at your forecast with Amy Carlson. And we do want to note that Foxconn officially announced just about 10 minutes ago that Mount Pleasant in Racine County is where the company will be building its plant. Stay tuned for more coverage on that story tonight on our NBC 15 newscasts. And now we'll take a final look at your forecast.